Live breaking news, Nez Nation, in the YSL, that is the Young Slime Life or Young, I don't even know what you want to call it, in the Young Thug. There's so many Young This and Young That, I get confused. Live breaking news, this is happening in, of course, Fannie Willis's district uh, in Georgia. Uh, you have lawyers for Yak Gotti. That's the picture above there. At the bottom is Young Thug. Yak Gotti, one of the defendants in this huge high-profile case happening in Fannie Willis's district, has just filed a petition for writ mandamus. They are asking the Supreme Court of Georgia to step in and pause the case and mandate that Judge Suge Knight Glanville refers their motion to recuse another judge i'm going to go through everything about what this means what is the actual ramifications what are some possible outcomes you don't want to miss this this is absolutely huge please tap that thumbs up and share this with everybody that you know now i actually have the entire um i have the entire um actual report right here but it is over a, I mean, it's over 80 pages long and so i have basically broken this down for you especially if you're not a legal expert or don't have legal acumen if you want to read the entire petition i'll, I'll put a link in the comments in the description down below but for sake of brevity and for uh, just making things you know in small and explaining them fast and conveniently i have gone ahead and read the entire Petition, read the entire uh, uh, motion, and I have summarized everything. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know right here, right now. So here is the summary of his name is DeMonte Kendrick, otherwise known as Yak Gotti. I mean, it's impossible to keep track of these names, but essentially this is the high profile case uh, in the um, YSL Rico Young Thug case in Fannie Willis's district. We all know Chief Judge... Earl Glanville, otherwise known as Judge Suge Knight, he has been boisterous, he has been vociferous, loud, cantankerous, and drama-filled, to say the least. So what he has done is he has a petition for a writ of mandamus and a stay of proceedings. That is kind of the main motion and petition. The petitioner is, again, DeMonte Kendrick. The respondent is Chief Judge Earl Glanville. That is uh, our guy right there, Chief Suge Knight. Uh, and here's some key points. What is the nature of this petition? So the nature of this petition is this is an emergency petition for writ of mandamus and a stay of proceedings in this uh, trial. And so what this essentially means is, and, and I'll go through that right now, it was filed in the Supreme Court of Ge Georgia today addressing allegations of judicial misconduct by Chief Judge Glanville, Suge Knight. Remember the secret meeting? Remember how upset he was? I did an entire video, how mad he got. Remember him holding Brian Steele in contempt, arresting him live in court. God, if you missed that video, I'll leave it in the end stream, but just go to my YouTube or Rumble, you will see it there. Primary allegations. Secret ex parte proceeding. Judge Glanville held a secret hearing on June 10th 2024 without this is huge without notifying defense counsel without notifying defense counsel that ladies and gentlemen is completely not allowed it's completely not i mean it's just not allowed that is not how it works in the criminal justice system anytime there's any kind of me you cannot have a secret ex parte meeting you have to have the other uh, side present and he did that without them. So he's being accused of coercion of witness during the secret proceedings. Judge Glanville and prosecutors allegedly use coercive tactics to pressure key witness Kenneth Copeland to testify. You remember Kenneth Copeland, right? She fired. Huh? What'd you say? I don't know. I think so. Whatever I said. Anything you say. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I actually think that's a pretty good uh, 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 impression of Kenneth Copeland. Otherwise known as Lil Woody. Lil Woody's his name. Withholding evidence, important exculpatory evidence, Brady material, disclosed during secret proceeding. I mean, this is insane. It was not provided to the defense. So all of these claims are actually true. They're actually true. 
So what is this? Request for relief. What is the writ of, 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 of mandamus? What does that exactly mean? Well, this is exactly what it means. Compel Judge Glanville appealing to a higher court to follow proper procedural judicial procedures, specifically Rule 25.3, and assign the motion for recusal to an unbiased judge. Remember, Judge Suge Knight refused. He denied the motion to recuse himself. It obviously is a conflict of interest. He should not be involved in any kind of motion to recuse himself. Why? Because he has personal stake in that. So it's a complete conflict of interest, but he denied it anyway, and he said, we're not going to do anything about it. This is why uh, Defense Counsel Weinstein, who is representing Mr. Kendrick, filed this. Uh, what is the stay of proceedings? It pauses the trial until the recusal motion is resolved. They are asking for uh, ordering Judge Glanville, Suge Knight, to produce an unredacted transcript of the secret ex parte proceeding. Remember, he agreed to, to provide transcript, but that was not enough, and it shouldn't be enough, and the defense counsel is completely justified in requesting an unredacted transcript of everything that happened because they deserve to know. They shouldn't even have to be appealing this. The judge should be like, of course, you're, you're by law, by due process, to uh, uh, give their defendants a fair and impartial trial. They have to provide everything that was included, everything that the prosecution is privy to. I mean, this is just common sense. You don't have to be a legal expert for this. Uh, what are the grounds for uh, recusal? The grounds for recusal, violation of rules, Judge Glanville, Judge Glanville's actions violated multiple rules, including Uniform Superior Court Rule 25.3 and Georgia Code of Judicial Conduct Rules 2.1, 2.9, and 2.11a, which ensure fair hearings and prohibit ex parte communications. Um, the secret proceedings this obviously creates bias and impropriety because what you have here is the secret proceeding and the judge's handling of the motion for recusal indicate a potential bias and lack of impartiality necessitating recusal to ensure a fair trial. Now, the urgency of this is really interesting. The urgency is this is an emergency relief action. That's what this... Um, that's what this um, writ of uh, uh, mandamus uh, uh, basically implies. Immediate action is required to prevent further compromise of the trial, as the ongoing proceedings are already tainted, they claim, by the alleged misconduct and coercion, which, if you ask me, is 100% correct. Legal citations. Uh, the petition of this case the petition cites various legal standards and precedents supporting the claims, emphasizing the need for judicial fairness and the defendant's right to a fair trial. So again, what this essentially means is this is their way of appealing to somebody who actually has common sense, somebody who actually has knowledge of the law. Again, another smear, another blight, another judicial cancer on the entire criminal justice system perpetuated and propagated by guess who no other than district attorney fanny cash money g madam willis i mean how many times has these high these high profile cases been these are all appointees these are all this is all related to fanny willis it all comes back to the queen bee the queen bee is the cancer and it spreads it spreads uh, uh, unabashedly. It spreads unobstructedly. It is awful. And so essentially, you know, what you have is they're trying to say, can we get anybody who has any legal acumen? Because obviously a judge Suge Knight is saying, I'm not going to do anything about it. The prosecution's happy about it. They know that everything's tainted. They had a secret ex parte meeting. These are not things that are allowable in any pragmatic, practical legal, legal is the operative word, legal setting in any fashion, any circumstance, doesn't matter who's being tried, doesn't matter what jurisdiction, this is unbelievably a direct violation of any type of fair and impartiality. Now, I think something that's really important is to talk about, well, what happens 
if this actually goes through. So let's talk about potential outcomes of this motion, because I think this is really, really important. What's going to happen? What's Is anything going to happen? What can happen? So let's talk about that. So if the granting of writ of mandamus is granted immediate action, the Supreme Court may order the judge to adhere to judicial procedure, specifically Rule 25.3, which requires assigning the motion for recusal to a different unbiased judge. Duh, obvious. Can I get a big fat duh in the comments? Give me a big fat D-U-H in the comments. Duh. Recusal. If the motion is found valid, a new judge, this is huge, a new judge would be assigned. So this is absolutely huge. If a new judge is assigned, that changes everything. To hear the motion for recusal, potentially leading to Judge Glanville, Suge Knight, recusal from the entire case. That is absolutely monsterful. I mean, huge. Granting the stay of proceedings, a pause in the trial. So another thing, if this thing does go through the trial proceedings in case, uh, and that's the actual case number there, I wanted to be very, very due diligent and legal in every fashion uh, would be temporarily halted. This stay would remain in effect until the resolution of the recusal motion. This would allow for review and adjustments. This pause allows for time for reviewing the allegations and making necessary adjustments to ensure a failed trial process, which is absolutely warranted. Um, Now, what about the transcript? So the unredacted transcript, this is really important. If this motion passes, the court may order the immediate release of an unredacted transcript. Oh, I can't wait. I want to find that out. Of the secret ex parte proceeding held on June 10th, 2024. This would provide transparency and allow the defense to review all disclosed information, which, by the way, is 1 billion percent justified, legal, and should be allowed. Now, in case this gets denied, um, a couple of obvious things. Proceedings as planned. The Supreme Court denies the petition. The trial will continue under Judge Suge Knight Glanville's supervision. There are also appeal options. The defense may seek other legal avenues to address their concerns, potentially appealing to higher courts or pursuing other motions within the current trial. No matter what happens, the verdict of this case, it is going to get appealed and it's going to be the appeal is going to be granted. There has been you want to talk about oh dear, oh dear of mendacity. You want to talk about major stank this trial? It's all over. Partial relief of specific orders. The court may grant some, but not all of the requested relief. For instance, they may order the transcript production without granting the stay of proceedings or the writ of mandibus. So there is some uh, interesting uh, things that could occur right there. Further hearings. Additional hearings may be scheduled to address specific aspects of the petition, providing a platform for both parties to present further arguments. The implications for the trial, uh, impact on witness testimony. If the court finds witness Kenneth Copeland was coerced, it may affect his credibility and the admissibility of his testimony, which they've spent God knows how many days, how many hours, how much resources the prosecution's office, Fannie Willis, All for not. It would all be wasted. Why? Because they think they can get away with murder. They think they can do whatever they want. They think they can have secret ex parte meetings without the defense present and then arrest the lawyer for daring to say what the hell's going on. It's insane. This is Fannie Willis, the cancer that she is. Further proceedings, the handling of this petition could set precedents for further cases influencing how similar issues are managed in the judicial uh, uh, system. So again, anytime there's any kind of motion, petition that's passed, it sets a precedent, a legal precedent. Now, what happens to the other defendants? So this is, again, remember, this is Yak Gotti, otherwise, uh, uh, you know, it was filed by his lawyers, uh, Doug Weinstein and Jay Abbott, um, this uh, petition for writ of mandamus. But what happens to Young Thug and the other defendants? Well, if Demontre, uh, if Demontre Kendrick, this is important to understand, if his emergency petition is granted, it could have significant implications. 
stay of proceedings. It's a unified trial. So if the trial is being conducted jointly for multiple defendants, a stay of proceedings would typically apply for everybody involved, pausing it for all defendants until the recusal motion is resolved. That's huge because other defendants could benefit from this uh, being passed. And I'm sure there was some kind of talk behind the scenes between Young Thug's attorney, Brian Steele, the one who was arrested in court, and uh, Mr. Weinstein, Doug Weinstein, Yak Gotti's attorney. Sever, uh, severed trials if the defendants are being tried separately, which they are not. Uh, recusal, a new judge, an appointment of a new judge. If Judge Glanville Shug Knight is recused, a new judge would be assigned to the case. This new judge would oversee all aspects of the trial, which could result in revisiting previous rulings and motions. Essentially, it would cause an absolute beep storm of magnificent proportions. Uh, also, reevaluating prior decisions, uh, access to evidence, uh, joint defense strategies, re-examination of witness testimony, broader claims of misconduct, overall fairness and integrity. I mean, it opens the wound, a delay in proceedings. You want to talk about a waste, a waste, a waste. Cash Money G is really good at wasting taxpayers' money. This would be absolutely damaging on all fronts. Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised? I mean, it's almost as if and by the way, this is true of anything. Anything this woman touches who is not qualified, should not be an attorney, should not be the district attorney, should not be uh, pursuing these high profile cases. She have no. She should be not only uh, uh, disbarred, not only disqualified, she should face criminal charges. She has cheated taxpayers of Fulton County, residents of Atlanta, Fulton County. She has cheated her constituents. Everything she touches turns to beep. Everything, everything she touches turns to Scheiza Meliza. That's German for the same word. Um, she's a cancer. She needs to be stopped. If she had any self-worth, if she had any self-respect, which I really highly doubt she has any, she and she's going to blame all this on being black. It's all because I'm black. It has nothing to do with you being black. It's because you're not qualified. You have zero talent. You probably have talent in other areas, lying, cheating, stealing. I get it but you have no talent in being a prosecutor. You have no talent in any legal affairs, period. I wouldn't have you be the DA of a Chuck E. Cheese in Guam, okay? You don't have any skills when it comes to running any operations of any department, any division, et cetera, et cetera. You're a cancer. Understand it, learn it, love it. You can move on with your life and you can stop wasting taxpayer funds. I want to hear from you, though. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this writ of mandamus will actually be passed? Do you think it will be disregarded? Do you think Judge Shug Knight should recuse himself? Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you made it this far, in the pinned comments, uh, uh, show notes, and description is our free newsletter. It's free. All you got to do is click on that link in the comment, click on free newsletter, and you give us your best email and you're a Nez Nation insider. This is your sure proof way of never missing out on all the latest that mainstream media will not share. They won't share it because they're too beholden to their, you know, a consortium. They're too beholden to their advertisers and they're too state media. They're just propagandist machines. So they're, they're beholden to the Obama Clinton consortium. I'm not beholden to anybody. I'm going to give you the truth. Become an insider right now. Tap that thumbs up. It really helps us out. I can't wait to hear from you. Check out these videos uh, uh, coming up on the screen right now. As always, follow and subscribe. And may God bless you. And may God bless America. I'll see you soon.